This is the Word Life Show, hosted by Crazy on Ujima 98 FM, Tuesdays 8 till 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. You like that track? I enjoyed that tune a lot, yeah. I can see you busting some moves, man. That, that change from dad dancing to actual striking <laughs> out, man. I, I see that as proper moves there. Yeah, man. That's all it took was a bit of gigs. You know, Cass is dead as well, man. I, yeah, I think, yeah. honestly, that guy, he's a game changer, man. I, I don't know if the commercial scene's quite ready for it, because he's a bit dark, but... Um, Maybe yeah. so, but he'll make his own scene, you know. He's yeah. doing his own thing. Yeah, yeah, that's it. He's, he's one of those guys that he, c- he can get down with... You know the underground or the mainstream. He's got a big could... cult following, man. I think yeah, he's, yeah. he's probably got to be like the most tattooed UK rapper. He's on like so many people have got tattoos of him, like the mask. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Has it become quite a quite a cult thing? A cult of a thing, yeah. Twenty three yeah. written on everything, and yeah. yeah, people think they're cool for writing twenty three on things. So I don't know about that. Well, anyway, so um, right, Bristol, big up yourself. This is the Word Life Show. Uh, this is where we interview our special guest host. Now, if you've just tuned in, uh, you've caught it a good time because I'm sat here with Dr. Syntax, a uh, hip-hop legend. Uh, he's been doing bits from day. If you don't know about Syntax, you need to check yourself and check the back catalogue because man's been putting in work for a time. Um, but yeah, what are you saying, bro? Are you good? Yeah, man. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Pleased to be here, man. You know, no, it's been a good show so far, man. You've got some bangers, man. Um, right, so basically, throughout the show, I've been playing... Uh, it's his new EP. Now, you say it came out... Well, I say new. It came out in September. It came out, it came out a few months ago, but, you know, time flies. Yeah, it it's, it's, it's new to me, fast. you know. Yeah, it's new to uh, a lot of people, I can imagine. Uh, the Tonic too. Yes. Now, um... Again, was that you say unintentional play on the chronic? Or? I think so. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it was really just when we made the first tonic EP uh, a couple of years ago. Now that was just um, it was at a time we just had a bunch of tunes that were just all quite fun. You know, there was a uh, and sort of unintentionally they all just seemed to have a theme running to them. They were like didn't take themselves too seriously. They were on a similar tip. So we thought, ah, you know, it's a tonic. It's a little uh, lift your spirits up type of thing. That makes sense. So, that makes sense. yeah, I think it was an unconscious little thing. You know, obviously, if you're into hip-hop and you know about the chronic, it's, it's yeah. always there in the back of your mind. I gen- yeah, when I, when I first seen that, I thought he yeah, has a player on it. But it's good that you've got that other meaning for it as well. So it's, it's a double, yeah. Anyway, right, so, bruv, um, okay, for... We're going to start this off, okay, imagine that people don't know who you are. Um, yeah, yeah. As you can imagine, we've got a lot of people in Bristol listening. Pick up all the taxi drivers driving around right now. I ain't got a clue who Dr. Syntax is. <laughs> <laughs> um, shame on you, you should know as well. Uh, but basically, uh, okay, Dr. Syntax, uh, where are you from? And yeah, how long have you been doing this music for? For a long time, isn't it? Oh, so. uh, yeah, good old long, long time indeed. Yeah, I'm from uh, Oxfordshire originally, that, that hip-hop hotbed. Uh, as yeah. you'd imagine, you know, Violin. or not. Lovely museum. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard, not been back for a while. Um, so yeah, just been uh, doing things for many, many years now, since the sort of early 2000s. First, I lived in Bright- I lived in Manchester for a bit, then I lived in Brighton, and was, was doing things on the underground scene there, you know, sort of cutting my teeth, getting in the battles and the open mics and all that sort of thing. And then the Foreign Beggars, who, if you don't know about them, the... The Foreign the Beggars uh, paths, obviously, Orifice Bogotron. That's and right. That, now, that's when I first come across you, I think. Yeah, in about 03, 04, that sort I of time. I think, yeah, that's the, 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 the one track that um, on their album, I can't remember what it's called. That's right, Glacial. Glacial, that's the one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's where yeah. you from. But you've done a lot of work with them throughout as well, haven't you? So, yeah, I mean, back then, when they were just starting out it was an exciting time for uh for the sort of UK rap scene which kind of gets overlooked nowadays but back when low life was a big thing and then yeah. foreign beggars had dented records and you know skinny man and task force and just all those people in their prime you know it was a great time to be doing things and I was just excited to be uh, getting involved and so I went on the first uh, couple of tours with uh, foreign beggars off the back of that first tune yeah. and that really opened my eyes to that's what they boosted you out into the, the forefront of people's yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm forever. I mean, as I say, um, that that is where I, I come across you. Also, as I say, I was doing a DVD documentary, the FU DVD. Um, yeah. And you were doing the tour with Stig of the Dump. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah was that oh, so? Sort of time? No, it was a few years later, because after that, you know, um, uh, about 2006, maybe. Um, that would make sense after about Yeah, when yeah. Stig uh, he moved down from Newcastle to London, and we became friends and uh, started touring together and making music and all that sort of thing. We did that for a good few years, and um, yeah, uh, that must have been I would say 2006 or so. But yeah, that's another little era, and that's when sort of 
you know, things are quite cyclical, you know, that's when dubstep was really kicking off and all that sort of thing, and hip-hop sort of went to the background a little bit, so yeah, seeing yeah. got a little less... Uh, you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't know in Bristol, because Bristol is always hot for hip-hop, you know, it's always... You say that, there was a lot of people who jumped on the trends. Yeah. Um, and it literally, they went uh, from being a grime MC to a dubstep MC to a producer, <laughs> literally has changed back and everything, and now they're trying to be hip-hop rappers again. <laughs> Yeah, I think like the younger generation, I like it that there's less of a bracket nowadays. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about that? I think I feel like when I see young MCs coming through, they're not like, oh, I'm this hip hop guy, I'm this grime guy. They're just MCs. I think with trap that's come around, yeah, a lot of hip hop is on a 140 tempo nowadays anyway. True. Uh, whereas previously, back in the days, you see in them days, uh, if it was 140, it was grime or, or something like that. You never really had 140 hip hop. Like it was rare. Um, you didn't have to double time stuff and if you did it'd be like a monumental feat where someone would be chatting doubly fast. You'd, you'd have your one track on the album like Biggie yeah, with yeah. the Bone Thugs joint. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And everybody kind of stands there looking at you a bit odd like, yeah? Yeah. Like so I, I think that's a good thing that the lines are a bit more blurred now and it's just yeah. what are you doing? Are you an MC? There you go. That's it. Yeah. So if you can rap on the beat you can rap on the beat now. But, um, right, okay. So that's uh, the history based cover. Okay, then um, hang on. you done... Um, a lot of stuff with, was it the mouse outfit? Yeah, that's right. I well, moved up to Manchester after I was uh, in London for a bit, doing all that stuff with Stig, and then moved up to uh, Manchester, hooked up with uh, my mate Pitch92, who's a producer up there. And then he's he, just done the Verb T album, hasn't he? That's right, yeah, he did the Verb T album, he's got a new album dropping on uh, High Focus very soon as well. Right, yeah, yeah. And I'm featured on that and a bunch of other people as well. Okay. But, um, yeah, for a while we were working with a band called The Mouse Outfit. We did six or seven years. We were getting about, and um, it was a big, you know, uh, sort of seven-piece band and a bunch of MCs. I met all, all the sort of uh, emerging talent of MCs in Manchester, and yeah. if anyone doesn't know about Manchester, go and check out all the artists that are coming out of there because they've got an amazing scene. Who was the other MCs in Mouse Outfit then? Uh, well, <laughs> This is the weird thing. It was never like there's MCs in the band. Right. It was always like there, everyone's a collaborator. But you had Sparks was uh, part Sparks. of it. All yeah, the people yeah. that ended up being the Levels crew well worth a, so a, a Black check. Josh and all that, all yeah, that. Black Josh. He, he he was up in there. Um, Truth Ask Me Faster. Big ups of Truth Ask. Fox can't forget Fox. Yeah, Much yeah, love yeah. for Fox. All of those guys from the crew called Levels. Now that's a good place to start. Go check Levels out. Yeah. But um, yeah, I had a lot of fun going around, lots of festivals and things and all that that sort of thing. But um, I've actually been down in Bristol for the last year now, so I've been. Yeah, you've uh, been living. You're a resident now. Yeah, yeah it's about time I checked in. You know, came you know, through and said what's up. On the local stations. But, but yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's a pleasure to have you around. It's good seeing you out at the events and that a lot more as well. Yeah, man. Well, there's a, there's a real buzz and a scene going on, and I like. It reminds me of Manchester. Uh, a few, a few years ago, you know, when uh, things were coming through, and, and it was popping, like, yeah. yeah, it was popping now, but it was developing. I, I can see there's, it feels like it's a crest of a wave down here. You know, you've got the different crews coming up and bringing something I together. I think we're at, like a really good time in Bristol. It is uh, a few years ago, it just seemed to go a bit dead. Where really? it was literally the only hip hop night after Rhyme and Reason closed down. Um, yeah. Apart from Sip the Juice, big up Sip the Juice. Um, but yeah, it was literally like a ghost town right here. There was hardly anything at all, and now literally every night there's something else on. It's an abundance for most nights. So yeah, and there's a lot of talent. You know, the, we, we uh, saw you at the uh, the AFT night the other night, and there's a the open mic going on with Billy Wiz on the decks. It was like, yeah, there's MCs killing it back to back. This is great. Yeah, and no. there's a, there's new new uh, you know, there's youngins coming through, smashing it. We got Risky, Felix, okay, uh, yeah, Peoples of the Clock. You know, and. You know that that kind of makes an old timer like me like it's like oh that's that energy right I better get back on it you know it can uh, stop I you getting lazy. Big up to Mum Spaghetti because you see all of them lot coming through ah, the Mum Spaghetti lot. Yeah that's yeah I need to get down there definitely. I'm hosting for them and I can tell you the next generation are doing us proud. Yeah. Actually, it's amazing to actually see them. They're fully like for a while I was thinking who's going to be the next generation is just literally the same old same old MCs. And then, woof, literally, it's a whole, like, ten different crews out there. Massive. It's mad, but, yeah, so we're going to have to watch if we don't get replaced and take Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cutthroat business. Yeah. So, um, right, so after uh, all the Demise Action stuff, Pete Cannon. Yeah, yeah. Well, You'd be working a lot with Pete Cannon. I think it would be strange not to touch on that. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Well, Pete, um, I met him years ago. He actually, he booked me for a show. He was running a night up in Manchester uh, about 2010 or something like that, 2009 maybe. And um, uh, we came up there and just uh, got on really well and have been friends ever since. And he's just, um, it was always... Uh, 
he always had incredible beats like he was just always a bit next level just smashing them out just people hadn't heard them you know even when i met him it was like wow you've got all this and no one knows about this yeah, yeah. and um and uh slowly but surely now it's a very different story he's producing for all types of people like all the you know he's done lots of stuff with Dirty Dyke he's, yeah, he's, he's down in London now just in the epicenter of things going on he's also working on a lot of jungle stuff and all this sort of thing but yeah, yeah he's yeah. just a I would say he's um, he's literally the most enthusiastic person uh, when it comes to making music that I've ever met yeah. like he will he's addicted like he um he can't go a day without doing something now you know sometimes I'll go off the rails and think oh I need to motivate myself and get back in and and, and get writing something but he every single day he's doing something and when you see that you go whoa and that's inspirational so I'm very lucky and very blessed to be uh, working with him okay yeah no no um, I mean the projects you've got I mean you work really well together anyway I mean some of the songs that you played, it's, it's, they're so funny, man. It's literally like something straight out of Peep Show almost. You no, know, well, thank you, man. I well, mean, I said that you need a panel show. I think you could seriously, <laughs> you could do well on Channel 4. I don't know. I think you've got that, um, I don't know, that, that melancholy kind of, like, um, quite dry humour on there. I think it's, it's, it could work really well translated onto, onto the screen. So, yeah. I think, yeah. Maybe so. Maybe you've got a face for radio, though, crazy, you know. Uh, I don't to know. See. They've got makeup people and <laughs> bad lighting. We can work. We have to figure something out. But yeah, now uh, right. So we have uh, a minute and a half left of the interview. All right. Um, so uh, right, the tonic two. Is that that's available online, streaming, and things like that? Yeah, yeah that's out there. We've got a bunch of other albums there. Pete Cannon, Doctor Syntax. You can find all that on your usual places. You know, uh, if I mean, you don't know about it. There yeah yeah go and check that stuff out but and we're also uh, we're working on an ep called wallop <laughs> let me try and say that again wallop wallop <laughs> well i should probably practice saying that word before yeah, i no, announce no, an ep it's, it's, but uh but yeah so that's coming out um late march is what we're looking at okay Let's so soon that. okay so yeah. that's coming. Uh, is there anybody on that or is that just yourself again or? uh the moment it's just me and pete but we're uh, we're, f we're fine-tuning it you know we no, we, no. we also we serve it up pretty fresh we don't uh, tend to uh let things marinate or, or wait. We, uh, if, if you hear a release from us, it's probably just been done to a deadline right. pretty soon before. I, I like that nowadays. You know, back in the day, you'd have to wait for, yeah. it so might be a year, year since, yeah. Like that, yeah. And some people like to work like that, and, but I, I, I like the freshness of it, you know. Yeah, so just get them out there, chuck them out there. Right, okay, so uh, as I said, we've got about 30 seconds left. Can you tell them your social media? So oh, yeah, sure. So like Facebook, I think it's Dr. Syntax Hip Hop. I mean, if you, Dr. Syn uh, yeah, Dr. Syntax Raps on uh, Twitter and Instagram. That's the main things to look for. Basically, just go on Google, type in Dr. Syntax, add all the pages, and start listening to the music. Yeah, you did a better job of that than me. That's, that's the better. <laughs> yeah, just to, to fair, yeah. Right, okay, so that's it from the interview. So we've got Brother, it's a pleasure having you in there. Um, my pleasure we've got some live bars so we're going to do a quick couple of adverts uh, so stick around on the other side and then you'll be able to hear some live bars in the studio from Dr. Syntax alright then Oh yeah alright okay let's go adverts 